Hi, this is Dr. Joseph Sarkisian. In this video, I will be demonstrating the restorative phase of a healed zirconia implant. Zeramex XT is a metal-free Swiss manufactured implant, which is placed one to two millimeters above bone level. It is a two-piece implant and the abutment is screwed in with a carbon fiber screw. There are no metal components to it. I will be using the I plus water lays unit by BioLase to expose the implant and trim the gums around it. We have the Zeramex XT implant with a cap, a healing cap on it. So we're gonna take the cap off and we're gonna do some lasering to expose the implant. And then we will put the uh, abutment We're going to use the prosthetic key to remove the cap. We're going to remove the implant cover, which is just a plastic cover while it's healing. Of course, there's some contamination underneath, so we're going to clean it, disinfect it, and now I'm going to continue lasering the tissue around the implant. This is the abutment, it's a pure zirconia abutment and this is the carbon fiber screw. We're going to try it in now. We're going to use this again, same driver. cleaning the internal surface. And suction again. So it fails. And we dry it really well. We have to make sure that this engages. The, the gap has to be partly visible so we can make sure that the, it engages the implant completely. We also have to make sure that the driver engages the slot for the screw firmly. If we use a wrench adapter and tighten the carbon screw firmly with our fingers, it may be enough, but it is hard to gauge the forces exerted by it and we can easily apply more or less force needed depending on the fingers and the uh, practitioner. Therefore, I use the Anthogear device set at 20 Newton centimeters to give it the final twist. More than 25 Newton centimeters is not recommended as it may strip the uh, threads of the screw. I like to cover the access hole with a provisional material called Clip Flow, which is made by Voco. This material remains rubbery, very easy to remove if we need uh, access to the screw in the future. And on top of the clip, I add a layer of a white, opaque, flowable composite. And then we treat the whole abutment as a regular tooth, which can be prepped and shaped.
So now we're going to do the perio test, which reveals the stability of the implant and gives us a value. Minus 3.3, .3, which is in a very good range. Any value in the negative shows that it's integrated nicely in the bone. The abutments at this point can be easily prepped as long as we use a new red striped fine diamond burr and very light pressure and a lot of water irrigation. Even the margins can be prepped so that we remain parallel or just subgingival to the uh, gum level. The water lays is used to fine trim the gums surrounding the margins and to give them their final emergence pattern, which is ideally funnel shaped. lower In processing the digital image uh, on the CEREC scanner, we make sure that we trim the abutment uh, within the gingival trench so that we can view the margins properly and make adjustments. Needless to say, uh, using this CEREC and this digital model that can be turned around and uh, viewed from different vantage points, we can make any change we want and uh, compensate for you know, any differences in uh, or any discrepancies in the platform or the position of the implant. The digital design is sent over to the CEREC milling unit via wireless and from there on we proceed with the various phases of the crown production and glazing which uh, I'm just outlining in sequence and will not give you too many details just follow the video. Thank you.
It's important to know that implants are rigid and have no give. Therefore, it is absolutely imperative to make sure the proximal contacts are not too tight. Otherwise, the crown will just not seat properly. To this effect, I use a thin strip of red occlusion paper, which marks the heavy proximal contacts. I then adjust these contact areas with a red burr and keep repeating this until I have an ideal contact. And this can be confirmed by holding the crown firmly down and using a floss, which should snap through without any extra effort. Then we polish the adjusted surfaces and obtain the patient's approval before final cementation. Okay, there we go. Yeah, as long as you're, that's how it's, yeah, that's how it is. Okay. I'll show you how to clean in between. Okay. Oh, you can like take it out and stuff? No. Uh, no, okay. no, between like with a little brush oh. because now you have a little between the implant and your toothache, you have a lot larger space. Alright. Once we get the patient's approval, then we can proceed with etching the crown internal surface with hydrofluoric acid for 20 seconds per IPS Emax uh, CEREC instructions. And then we silane the same surface after careful and thorough irrigation and drying. We use Relix Unisem to cement the crown and we use it sparingly to avoid too much excess because we should never have any cement rests in the gum pockets. Flossing the cement off uh, should involve holding the crown firmly down and wrapping the floss around the uh, margins and uh, just be careful not to let go of the crown, keep holding it firmly down because then the floss may lift the crown and remove the cement from the uh, very important seal area. After cementing, we wait at least five minutes before we do a bite check and the occlusion is adjusted so that the final contacts are a little lighter than the remaining teeth because as we know and as I said previously, the implant is very rigid and it should not be entertaining heavier contacts than the regular teeth which have a certain give to them. And the bite check has to be repeated once a year because as the remaining teeth wear down, the implant will not and it may eventually end up hitting harder. <laughs> 